For Creamer Media's Policy, I'm Sashni Mudli. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sutner joins me to discuss ethics and solidarity. Hi, Professor. Hi. Why did you think it was necessary to raise the question of ethics and the liberation struggle? Yeah, you know, I'm preoccupied with ethics and I think it's partly because I'm trying to understand how it is that people who uh, I worked with, people who I know of, who were very, very brave, have done things which some people find shameful. For example, on Facebook the other day, after the vote in support of, um, against impeachment, people put the list of who had voted uh, no to the impeachment motion on Facebook. Now they did this often Kandler, who had done it. They want to write, uh, the people who are opposed to what's happening now, uh, in a sense, want to stigmatize those people. Now, I'm not interested so much in stigmatizing anyone. I'm trying to understand ethics. Am I wrong in thinking that those people who came into the liberation struggle came into a movement partly because of ethical reasons, because uh, we thought that apartheid was wrong and uh, that the international community broadly thought it was wrong. The oppressed people of this country thought it was wrong. And for that reason, many people were pre prepared to put their bodies on the line. Many people died for that. And um, so I wanted to raise it also thought of it in the context of it was considered so wrong that uh, it was treated by international organizations as similar to Nazism. For example, uh, the Nuremberg trial declared um, the Nazi actions as a crime against humanity. Now apartheid was also declared crime against humanity. In other words, there was a body of weight which treated apartheid is as so ethically wrong that there was a legal basis for condemning it. Not just, I don't like it, or it's, I don't think this is right, but that uh, very, very close to what they were applying to Bashir, that you could arrest someone who had perpetrated the crime of apartheid. And I've been trying to understand then what, uh, you know, if some people come into a struggle because they analyze and they have an idea that the way the ANC is operating makes sense because the trajectory is this, that and the other and balance of forces is this. But what I'm examining is something different I've been reading a lot of religious writing because um, if you read Plato, Aristotle, not Marx, because uh, Marx is very uh, informed by moral, moral uh, outrage as well, but if you read some of the classical writers, a lot of the writing is fairly abstract. Now, a lot of religious writing that is influenced by prophetic traditions is concerned not just with abstract ideas of the good society and all of that, but it's concerned with the orphans, the poor, the vulnerable. So I've been reading a lot of this, so it's in my mind, and I've been trying to make sense of it, and this article was an attempt to make sense of the connection, which need not be there, depending on the time and development of the liberation movement, but the connection between ethics and liberation. You trace the meaning of the word comrade and say that it has come to connote exclusiv exclusivity, um, a barrier between comrade and the masses. Why do you say that? Yes, it's quite interesting because, uh, you know, a lot of people feel uncomfortable with the word comrade and they don't like it to to use it because they associate it with uh, uh, Stalin or 
abusers and uh, a lot of people who call themselves comrades are busy stealing from the poor and things like that. Now the point that I was making about it no longer being a word connoting a group of people who work together in solidarity with the poor, instead it's become a group of people who in varying ways act as a barrier to the needs of the poor. Now, this I relate to notions of patronage. That the ANC, and I ask in the article whether I am correct in thinking this is new, because I think there's probably been patronage always in the ANC. In other words, that you support someone who's powerful in exchange for certain favors. The difference between exile or uh, UDF and the present is that the resources that are available in patronage are much greater. So if I support someone as a candidate, uh, it may well be that this is done in exchange for a contract or a job or for some other opportunity for enriching myself, improving my lot in life. And I think when you unite like this um, notions like National Democratic Revolution, Freedom Charter, uh, the Strategic Center, they really, you may use those phrases, but you're really concerned about your bank balance. And consequently, the comrades have become a group in many respects, not in every respect, in many respects who are self-supporting, self-perpetuating, and stand no longer in a relationship which is supportive of the oppressed people, but is a barrier to the achievement of their goals. Now, and Kandla is a very, very clear example of this because the money used for Nkandla, some of it was diverted from what was needed for poverty alleviation. You can see in a number of other cases where there's water shutoffs and the water actually supply comes back, but they continue getting a private contractor because there's some relationship of patronage between the private contractor and the councillors. So that was what I was saying, and I feel it is very serious because if you remove Zuma, as many people say must be done, you have nevertheless still got these relationships at every level of the ANC and government, and you need to undo them in order to meet the needs of the ordinary people of South Africa. Thank you for speaking with us, Professor. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Sutner speaking to Cream Media's policy about ethics and solidarity.